Hi there, aerial videographers and pilots. This video, we're going to cover the Mavic Air uh, DJI Go 4 app. My name is Greg Kung. I'm an aerial videographer. I've uh, been flying drones since the first generation Phantom 1, since 2013, when I picked one up in Hawaii. And this is the third successive video I've done of the app tour, starting with Phantom 3. Mavic Pro and now Mavic Air so it's the same similar look and feel and I recommend that you have your drone on you have the app installed and you're connected to get the most benefit out of this video so we're gonna start off by opening up the DJI Go 4 app and the format of this is I'm going to cover the essentials of the app. We're going to go through the camera view, which is the, the heart of this app. How's it going? And let's just backtrack there. So we are in looking at my loft in Kuala Lumpur. Definitely check this place out if you have the chance. So this splash screen here, uh, we have some stuff that I want to go over as well. We will do that after things like flight records, geozones, fly my drone, the academy, and the flight simulator is in the academy. We'll go through the editor, sky pixel, and let me just go over um, the red band that's getting our attention in the top left. So if there's an update available for your remote, for your drone, it's going to try grab your attention there and I recommend you do this when you have Wi-Fi in a controlled environment like your home or office. Bottom left, it's showing us that we're connected to the drone. If not, you'll have to go through the linking process, which I have a video on. Basically, follow the instructions and press the button at the back of the drone to link it. Okay, but we're going to go straight in to the app by clicking Start Flight. And I'm going to go over in a clockwise fashion all the um, stats. And then I'm going to dig into the menus. And then we're going to go through the camera view. So let's get started. So starting in the top left, we see... A yellow bar ready to go vision this means that we don't have enough satellites but we can still fly in a limited fashion using the vision sensors now normally you would want to have a green bar that says ready to fly GPS this means you have enough satellites I believe it's more than 11 satellites and the bar will show green that means that you can fly with um, fly, fly freely with little restrictions you can also see a red bar if there's a problem with the aircraft uh, or you need to do compass calibration or maybe you need to apply a critical update all right moving on uh, we see opti this is the normal fly mode if we flip the switch on the remote that says sport, you'll see that it switches to sport mode. Sport mode allows you to race with the drone. It's going to fly a lot faster and behave a lot differently. Opti mode is going to be more controlled by default. And um, yeah, that's all you need to know really the uh, the next icon is your satellite coverage so we have no satellite coverage I got the drone in the heart of my loft here so it's blocking the signal the other icon is telling us that the drone sensors are on and then we have the connection to the drone and the remote over Wi-Fi 5.8 G and we have the drone battery percentage, 94%, a very important uh, area to be aware of. 
Okay, just below there we have our stats for video or photo. We can tell which mode we're in on the right hand side. The red circle is for video and if I switch to photo, we've got very different settings. I'm just going to set it to auto for now. Don't worry, I'm going to go through I'm going to go through this section in in detail, so don't worry about that. I'm just going to adjust the settings here so I got a better picture. And then I'll take a quick snap. I like I like the lighting that we have right now. Okay, so that big white button is to take a photo or you can do it on the remote control right over here and video is over there and by the way when you fly best to have the antennas facing up for best reception so that the signal comes from the antennas there over to the drone and we're going to cover the gimbal later so on the bottom left there's a wheel there not sure if you can see that but um, on the app you can see the circle changing okay what happened there we got bumped out you can see that circle moving up the the ruler there so if you move your dial to the right it's going to move the camera higher up the ruler line and I'm going to show you how you can enable your gimbal to go to that high angle that I just went to. Okay, so let's get back to the stats there. So uh, that's showing us our ISO, our shutter speed, our exposure. So we are technically a bit overexposed. We're on auto white balance and we are recording to JPEG format. And we have the ability to take 10,225 photos. If we switch to video mode, it gives us slightly different stats. For capacity, it's giving us the amount of time we can record because it's video. Okay, and again, I'm going to go over the camera settings in detail. Uh, let's just move on. So, uh, on the right side, Later on, we're going to drill into this area where we can set our recording video size and how we can change from auto to manual settings. Let's just change this though so we've got a better exposed picture. And below we have the preview button, the play button. This allows you to preview the footage on your SD card or you can look at the internal storage on the drone there's 8 gigabytes of internal storage so you might need to go in there to free up some space if you realize oh you didn't copy the footage from the car the day before and you need to clear it up okay we have the map on the bottom right we can expand that you can get a overview of the city. Okay, the bottom there we have our telemetry or our stats that show us the distance the drone is away from from you or the remote. This is a important one to pay attention to. Typically I don't fly my comfort level is about 300 meters, three to four hundred but sometimes, depending on the area, you might not even fly between 1 and 200 meters. Or maybe you're just going to fly under 100 meters away from you. You also have to pay attention to the altitude. Depending on where you are flying, there might be restrictions. But uh, my comfort zone is between 100, around 100, 150. If it's a, it's a really tall building and we're allowed to fly up to 200. I, I rarely fly higher than that. And we have our horizontal speed. How fast the drone is flying. Vertical speed, how fast it's ascending or descending. 
and our VPS is telling us our it's the sensor at the bottom of the drone so it's telling us we're 0.1 meters above a flat surface I believe bottom left is our radar giving us the direction this is useful if you you can still see the drone but you're not sure which is which way is the front of the drone where the camera is because it might just look like a black speck in the sky so you can use the radar to help you out with that a pass has to do with uh, enabling or disabling the sensors you might want to just click on that or Google it just to make sure I'm not a hundred percent sure to be honest I don't use this feature but it has to do with enabling or disabling the sensors temporarily the next icon is to bring us into our intelligent modes so I'll go through these quickly quick shot is where you can find things like dronies so these are like selfies for your drone it'll record a short video and fly backwards and up pretty cool we also have the asteroid shot which will make the small world effect sort of like uh, if you've seen some of those 360 pictures so that's all in the quick shot active track will allow the drone camera to track you to get some selfie footage the uh, smart capture will do the same but instead of video it'll do photos so you might have to make silly gestures for the drone to automatically take photos of you tripod mode I like this mode for doing smooth 360 pans or just pans with the drone while it's in the air. The drone's going to fly a lot slower while you're controlling it in tripod mode. And for this reason, this is a good mode to practice flying your Mavic Air while you're first starting out. Also, if you have a small area to fly, like you don't want to fly over houses or, or people, but you still want that feeling of motion tripod mode is a good mode to fly in as well cinematic mode is going to fly normal speed but it's going to fly a lot smoother when you're flying and you let go of the sticks the drone is going to glide for a bit before it comes to a standstill so this is a good setting to get cinematic footage and just allow the Mavic Air to fly a lot smoother to get that smooth footage. Tap fly, you can tap on the screen, the drone will fly to the target. I don't particularly like this mode. Point of interest will orbit around a building, uh, an interesting object. I use this a lot if I'm filming like a temple or an interesting building. And you can do things like control the radius, the direction that it orbits clockwise or anti-clockwise. So those are the intelligent modes. Uh, I think these are really good because when you're using intelligent modes, the drone is on some type of autopilot and this frees you up to focus on controlling the gimbal or the angle of the camera while it's flying. All right, next icon up is return to home. You can also do this manually or from the remote, but it's also on the app. But sometimes, you know, when things are electronic, your drone or your screen might be sticky or you might get that annoying white dot if you're using an Apple device that's in the way and, and you need to do something quickly. That's where you got the button on the remote to do the same function. Okay, the icon pointing up is for automatic takeoff so if you click that it's going to give you one last opportunity to cancel or you can slide it with your finger to take off which I'm not going to do because I'm inside but uh, this is good if you want to do a takeoff from your hand this is what I will use this feature for alright so we've covered the the basics now let's just dive into the menu 
So if we click on the status bar right there, it's going to take us to the aircraft status and we can click on the overall status. Now if there's a problem, this is where the message will be. So it's reminding me I need to apply an update. Let's click on it again. Gives us our flight mode. So this is where we can change the maximum height we can fly to, the maximum distance. Compass calibration. I spend a lot of time uh, doing a compass calibration, especially if you're in an area with a lot of magnetic interference. So the way to deal with this is you either might need to place the drone in another area nearby or actually go through the ca calibration process or combination of the two. Worst case scenario, you can just pop out the battery, restart the Mavic drone, and to find a combination of those three things will allow you to fly in an area. Okay, um, as far as the calibration, Steps, just follow the instructions. Uh, I'll try to provide you a video with how I do it. Uh, compass dance, as it's called. I am used the, I believe, the computer of the drone. So status is normal. Just telling you a lot of status of the sensors. Remote controller mode. It's on mode two. That's the default. That's what I fly in, but you can Go in there and change it if you want. Remote controller battery, 76%. You can customize some of the buttons on the remote over here. Um, but I just leave it. You can also sense your gimbal. Aircraft battery. And we can format the SD card or the internal storage. So this menu is, it'll give you a good overview of everything that's happening in the drone. Okay, now we're going to look at the other menus. So on the top right we have the three circles or three dots. So if we tap on that, general settings, this allows us to change the measurement units. I fly in metric, but this is where you can change the metric to something else. I don't broadcast, but this is where you'd find it. Now this is where you can enable the video cache if you want to store a copy of the footage on your mobile device. And why would you want to do this? Maybe you want to use the editor, which I will show you how to use if you want to create a quick video right after flying. You don't want to bring the footage to your computer and edit it. You know, that takes some time. So. That's why you would want to enable this and from here you can clear the cache, you can set the size of the video cache on your mobile device. So mine's just set to 2 now. You can even record audio on your video cache. Okay, so that's general settings. Next area, this is where we can control the sensors. So most of the sensors are enabled by default, but there is a setting for um, horizontal obstacle avoidance in tap fly and obstacle avoidance in active track. Okay, so I just leave those all on. I want all the sensors on. Now, this is where we can also adjust the extra buttons on the remote control. We have a function button over there. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. And there's an extra button beneath the, the button to take a photo where you can customize this. So for example, the function button, I can just tap and say that I want to set this button to give me the battery info. Okay. Next area is the Wi-Fi settings. I just leave it on auto. Okay, this is the battery settings. So I think the normal battery warning is at 30%. I like to bring this down to 20% because I like to fly uninterrupted. Once I hear that warning, I, I start to panic a little bit. And I'm comfortable enough I can bring the drone back in time 
and I don't need that warning at 30%, but that depends on your comfort level. And worst case scenario, the drone, the Mavic Air is now smart enough to calculate how much battery time is required to bring it back to the home point, and it'll automatically start bringing it back down. So you, you know that at the back of your mind, so you've got different levels of safety built into the Mavic Air now. If you click on details, you can see the amount of times the battery is charged and the serial number. Okay, let's click on the gimbal settings. Over here, you can change the gimbal mode. Uh, I typically just leave it on the default, just follow. Over here, you can adjust the gimbal, calibrate it. Now, here is a setting that I spoke about. It's called Extend Tilt Limit. This allows you to bring the gimbal higher than it normally is. See how high I can go over here? That's because that's enabled. All right, now it is time to go through adjusting the camera settings. All right, so let's look on the right side. So we are in video mode. Let's just quickly cover photo mode. And just want to let you know, my focus and specialty is on the video side. And because of that, I focus on getting video while I'm in the air, but I still want to get some snaps. So after I've positioned the drone, I've framed the shot, I've gotten my video shots, I'll pop this into photo mode. I'll just tap it on auto. I trust that the computer will calculate decent values. And I put on my ND filter, especially if I'm flying in bright settings, like outside, and I let the computer take care of the rest, and then I'll just take a quick snap. Okay. Now, if we click on that menu underneath the white circle, we can adjust some settings. So these settings apply overall. This is not a photo or video specific setting. You can turn on histogram. You can control the LED lights on, on the arms. I always recommend having the lights on, especially at night. And I don't recommend flying like when it's pitch dark at night. There's, there's a, a sweet spot when it's just after sunset when uh, you can still get good footage and it's still relatively safe to fly. So keep that in mind. Okay, you can do things like anti-flicker mode. Okay, so areas that I spend time in here is to format the SD card or the internal storage. If you need to reset the camera settings, this is where it is. Okay, let's click on the camera and look at photo specific settings. So you can see here we can do panos, timed shots, HDR, single shots. So someone focusing on aerial photos might spend some time here. You can change the dimensions of the photos, 16 to 9 or 4 to 3. Image format, white balance. Okay, you can even take raw photos. So I just changed mine to 16 to 9. And yeah, so that's on auto. And let's take another photo here. But we can also adjust it manually, so if I thought that it is a little bit dark, let's bump up the ISO, and there we go. Let's go over to video mode. This is where I can give you a bit more info. So let's go to the camera and start off with video size. Okay, so if if you're going out to shoot some footage, I would recommend choosing 4K, the highest resolution. Technically, this is ultra 4K. You have a choice of 24, 25, and 30 frames per second. 24 frames is the cinematic setting. 30 frames is more broadcast. It's more like a sports broadcast type of setting. 
We have uh, 1080p. We can select super slow mo, so that's that's pretty cool. Or traditional HD 24 frames. Now, because I'm recording this tutorial, I don't want to take up too much space. I'm gonna record 720p at 24 frames. Actually, let's do HD. HD 24 frames and back out there. Video format, I leave it mauve, white balance on auto, style sets to the default, and the color I like to leave on Cine D Cine like. It's called Cine like D on the on the Panasonic GH5. And um, so this color profile will leave the colors more flat, less saturated, so you have more room to adjust the picture in your video editor. All right, let's click on the icon over there. So this allows us to adjust it manually. Okay, so we chose 1080p 24 frames. So the good starting point is to sh set the shutter speed to 50, which is double the frame rate. Well, technically it's 48, but 50 is the closest. So that's a good place to start. Now let's pay attention to the meter below that. So that's a rule of thumb or more of a guide that tells you whether your camera is overexposed or underexposed. Now it's plus 2.3. Ideally we want 0.0. .0. So anything above zero means you're overexposed. So we can adjust the ISO to bring that value down, or I can put an ND filter on the lens, and that will probably bring that value down as well. So let's just bring it down one notch from ISO 800 to 400. So you can see it's brought that down a bit. Let's bring that down to ISO 200. We're still overexposed, so let's bring it to ISO 100. We are still overexposed a little bit more. You can see my laundry drying out on the balcony now. So at this point, we are at the lowest ISO, so I can either put an ND filter or I can adjust the shutter slightly higher. We do have a bit of wiggle room to adjust the shutter, you know, two to three stops without losing that cinematic feel. So ISO 100, this is fine. And if I wanted to have more emphasis on the outside background on, on my laundry and the city view, I could increase the shutter even more. Okay, we are recording and we can adjust these settings while it is recording. So let's bring it up to 100. Okay, so according to the computer, this is a good setting, but it really depends. You have to use common sense. If I wanted to brighten up myself so that I've got better lighting. I'll bring up the ISO, bring it closer to shutter speed 50. And there we go. There's more emphasis on me and now the background's blown out. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that coverage of the app. Uh, if you enjoyed it, I have other lessons I'm going to cover on learning the Mavic Air from actually going out and flying it, my favorite techniques, as well as full workflow, bringing that footage back and editing your Mavic Air footage into an amazing video, as well as give you a path if you decide you want to take this as a hobby to more commercial work or get into things like monetizing your footage. If that sounds interesting, you're going to love my course, which is a series of video lessons. We're going to do it inside as well as outside. I'll also go out into the field to give you some actual demonstrations. Okay, so if 
you enjoyed that part, you can continue to watch. I'm going to create other lessons on the flight records, the flight simulator, and editing the footage. This is all within the DJI Go app.